Now here is a really fun simultaneous equation. That's when it gets quadratic. Quadratic means squares are getting involved. So this is a simultaneous equation. It would be about six or seven marks in the exam. And let's have a go at solving it. Umar needs to solve the following simultaneous equation. How will he do it? I've coined a little rhyme. It doesn't really rhyme, but begins with S. Subject, substitute, simplify, solve. First, you need to pick the easy equation, this one down here, which is not quadratic, and make x or y the subject of the equation. To make something the subject just means that it's y equals blah, 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 or x equals blah, 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 not 2x plus y, etc. The y has to be on its own, or the x has to be on its own. Let's make y on its own in this equation. To do that, all we need to do is take away 2x from both sides, and then the y will be on its own. So we're doing step one, which is to make y the subject. If we take away 2x from both sides, what we'll get for this bottom equation is y equals 5 take away 2x. Now, this top equation, how are we going to substitute this value into here? First of all, a little word about this top equation. If we drew that equation, do you know what it would look like? x squared plus y squared equals 16. Well, I can tell you, if you didn't know already, which is it's a circle. Anytime you see x squared plus y squared, it's a circle. Now, this is a slightly separate topic, but just to let you know what that equation would look like, I don't need to fill it in, it would be a circle, and the radius is actually the square root of this number. I think I've done another video on this, but the radius is the square root of this number. So square root of 16 is 4. So this would be a circle of radius 4. Just an interesting fact here. And it does come up in exams as well sometimes, so it's good to know. And in fact, by solving this simultaneous equation, even more interesting is, imagine you have that circle on a grid. Let's do an x and y axis. So the circle is the middle of the grid. And then we're going to draw the other line on, which is 2x plus y equals 5, which we know is actually y equals 5 minus 2x. So it cuts through at 5 and has a gradient of minus 2. And the simultaneous equation actually tells you, when we finally get the solution, it tells you when this line, which is the bottom equation, crosses over the circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals 16. And so the two solutions, which we should get, are going to be the coordinates. Let's do it in black here and down here as well. So that's an interesting fact. But anyway, back to the rhyme, substituting it in. We know y equals 5 minus 2x, so whenever we see a y in the top equation, we're just going to write 5 minus 2x instead. Let's have a go at doing that. So we have x squared still, and let's not do it in black, let's do it in white. Plus, now instead of writing y, I'm going to write 5 minus 2x, because notice y equals 5 minus 2x, that's what we found out from before. So y is 5 minus 2x, so the equation becomes x squared plus 5 minus 2x squared equals 16. Now comes the laborious bit. Notice, if we square this bracket, it does not mean uh, 5 squared and minus 2x squared. We have to do the full double bracket expansion, as in 5 minus 2x times by 5 minus 2x. Front times front, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times minus 2x is minus 10x. Minus 2x times 5 is minus 10x. And minus 2x times minus 2x. I can draw a little arrow to show you the, the sums I've been doing. 5 times 5, 5 times 2x, minus 2x times 5, and minus 2x times minus 2x. Well, minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4, and x times x is indeed x squared. So if we expand these brackets, this is what we get. Putting all of that back into the original equation, remember this bracket here, let's do it in orange or, or brown actually, this bracket all expands into that. So that you can replace with all of this. So I'm going to write it again nice and neatly. 
This gives us x squared, which we had to begin with, then plus 25 minus 10x minus 10x and plus 4x squared. Now let's gather together like terms. We have an x squared and then 4x squared, so that adds up to 5x squared. By the way, now we're doing the simplify bit, 5x squared. Minus 10x minus 10x is minus 20x, and we have a plus 25. But notice the other side is equal 16. We can't really solve equations until things equal 0. So what I'm going to do is minus 16 from both sides. I'm going to take away 16 because we want things to equal to 0. So right down the bottom we have now 5x squared minus 20x and 25 minus 16 is 9. So now it equals 0. Before we go into solving this, I just want to say that the main point of this video is to show you how to solve simultaneous equations. It's not to show you how to factorize or use the formula. So if this bit goes a bit quickly, it's because I've done other videos on factorizing and solving equations. This video is mainly about solving quadratic simultaneous equations. So how would I solve this? I do a quick check to see if it can factorize. And the way I do that is 5 times 9 is 45. Anything that can multiply to get 45, 15 and 3 doesn't get 20. 9 and 5 doesn't get 20, so no, it doesn't factorize. And so I'm going to use the formula, which is minus b, plus or minus, it's the familiar formula they give you at the front, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the formula. This is something you get at the front of the exam paper. It's good to know off by heart, but... I'm just going to do it here very roughly, minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. And by the way, this formula works for anything. So even if it had factorized this um, quadratic down here, we could still use the formula if we're being lazy. The a stands for the first number in front of the x squared, which in this case is 5. So a equals 5, b equals minus 20. And minus 20, I have to be very clear, many students just write 20, b is minus 20, everything in front of the x, and c is the number on its own, which is 9. Then I will plug this into the formula. Now magically, I've already done this on my calculator, and I get 3.48. And there are many different ways of typing this into the calculator, so I recommend practicing until you get all the minuses right. Many, many students, most students get the minuses wrong when they're typing it in. For example, they forget that it's a minus b, so the minuses here would cancel to become plus 20. But anyway, get the practice in. So one of the solutions is 3.48, and if I just change this to a minus, I'll get the other solution, which is 0.51 or 0.52. So 3.48 and 0.52. And it will usually say to three significant figures. But those, remember, are our solutions for x. So those will be the x-coordinates of the two points where the line and the circle cross, or the, basically the solution to this simultaneous equation. You need to then go and put those two values into the equation, into either of these equations. I recommend the easier one down here to find out why. So we would actually do, and I can do the calculation separately, but just to let you know what I'm doing, I would do 2 times 3.48 without rounding it. So I'd do the full number that I had before, and plus y equals 5. So as in any simultaneous equation, once you've got the answer for x using quadratic formula or factorizing or whatever, you then put it into the original equations to work out what y is. y becomes 3.96 and minus 1.96 and those are the solutions to this quadratic simultaneous equation. Practice it as much as you can but remember the basic method which is to make things the subject, make x or y the subject, substitute it in, simplify and then solve.